<laughs> Great. See you later. Now, okay. Michael Brown's story is rather different, but still, in its own way, a remarkable one. A Cynthia Lennon now. Been a great city lover. And this particular landscape leaves a lot to be desired. It's bleak and a little frightening. And as an artist, uninspiring too. But not for everyone. Michael Joseph Brown is now studying at Chelsea Art College, but his work still reflects the human presence of his childhood. Yeah, I've been drawing since I was at primary school, only for enjoyment, and mm -hmm. then up till about the sixth form at Wilburn Way School, and then I started painting properly. My dad left when I was about four, five years old, and he lives somewhere else in Manchester now. And uh, so I've been brought up, brought up with my mum mainly, in my, in my, my side over here. Did you ever at any time get into trouble with the police? Yes, one or two occasions, yes, which were close shows, but that was in, in when the rights were, I was starting to get into bad company. And the problem was that that was getting into my school and uh, it affected the school and it affected the tutors or teachers' opinion towards me and they ended up going towards uh, well, a negative side in a way. Everything just weren't working out right. And uh, then there were arguments at home. And so that was getting tense. Only two people in the house. When you were with your mum, you had problems working late at night. Yes, yeah, yeah at about 11 o'clock, she used to tell me to turn my light off and things um, because uh, she doesn't have much money for electricity. I had to leave at one stage, so I went into school one day, went into the art room and uh, doing my artwork there and this, the tutor who was very helpful at the time, you know, he's a good art tutor, he said, oh, well, if you have to leave your house, you can come stay with me. So I was quite pleased about that. So did you get on with his family? Very yeah, well. yeah, like, he's yes. like my guardian, you know, he's quite, did quite well for me. Yeah. And uh, he made me see what prospect art could give me, you know, because everyone's unaware of that, especially when you don't know if you've got any, any form of ability. ability. So. so how many years did you stay with your teacher? Yeah, about two and a half years on and off. But the first time was, I was there for a year. And then I came home again, then I had another row, and then I moved back again. You were introduced to a gallery, weren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was at my art teacher's house at that time. And um, I went with his wife. And uh, the, the gallery manager, like the piece of work I did, and he says, uh, get me 30 of those by Christmas and you can have an exhibition. drawing to do a, a build-up of mistakes and so when I draw something I have a, a mass of mistakes down and, and I've got something to correct mm. but it's um I find it silly or impossible for me to get something on correct to start with pencils more pliable or movable in that way so I can um, rub it out and remodel it and I can get results fairly quickly this is your third exhibition how has your work differed you know, between from the first exhibition to now? Well, the work I did in the first exhibition was all done in Manchester, and it was fairly... Some of it was cold, but it had, um, it had heart, in a way. And, uh, but recently, there's um, certain undertones of the formal atmosphere of London which has affected the work, and the work has lost, in a way, it's lost its heart and it's become much colder. <laughs> Not upbringing because that's labelling on a particular person or whatever, but it's just the surroundings or, or circumstance or condition you're in, and uh, that circumstance I was brought up in has had effects on me which I'm not aware of because of the uh, situation and because I was used to it. It's um, moulded its way into my outlook in a way, mm -hmm. not so literally speaking, so but it's obvious. But um, because of, regardless of what I paint or draw it still comes across in the work a certain downtone or a down key look. Michael recognises that the time he spent at his art teacher's home was crucial for him. I was painting before I moved to his house, but um, what happened is he made me aware of my, um, not a talent, but an interest. So if I, would have had to go into a home and didn't move to his house. Um, 
I wouldn't have been able to do painting in the same way. It probably might not have happened, and I would have been doing something completely different. Absolutely fantastic. With me, Kerry Cooper. Kerry, uh, I'd like to actually talk about the four examples we've seen so far sure. in success, but what's the difference? What makes one person a success and another a failure? Well, I think we could see it all, couldn't we? We could see the motivation and the drive. And a lot of the research has shown, and I've done a lot of work on this, shows that also people who are successful, of course, like George said, don't actually know that they're successful because they're striving all the time. In fact, when they die, they won't, they won't know they're successful. Primarily because somewhere in their early childhood, and I think we've seen it, either in early childhood or later in life, they've had some kind of negative experience. That is the driving force, the pushing force. That's the little animal right by your ear. So we're not born a success or a failure. No. It's something that happens in our... Yeah, I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's as Michael just said at the end. It's those circumstances that have done it for me. You can see the circumstance coming out in his paintings. But the negative things in Michael's life have pushed him, have pushed him to, be, to get, want to get out of it and want it, to want to be in control, I think, is another variable. Because most of the people who've talked here have been in circumstances where they haven't been in control. Somebody else has controlled them. Either they're a working-class background or a death or something has controlled them. And now they want to be successful so they can have some edge on this control. Well, let's whiz round. That success. Perhaps, ultimately, we have to look to God as, as the, the way in which human beings are fulfilled. In the He's end. there. I don't think people rely on him enough. Mm. Have Power. you always thought that? Oh, is it through some of the tragedies that you've been through that you realise I, that? I, I, am a, I am a lapsed Catholic, but I, I have a, a strong, strong faith, and I don't know how people get through life without it. What about God's some, been very good to me. What about me. somebody who's probably come from the poorest background, who's Michael, Michael great yes. talented painter. Do you believe in God? In success? Um, through work in, a, in certain ways, yeah, but not, I wouldn't admit to it directly, no. Because, I mean, well, I mean, it's well, not obvious what? to me. Um, because, I mean, God, I don't attach God to real, real, reality is around me, what I'm sort of concerned with or what, what affects me. And, like, I mean, I wouldn't even touch on any areas like that until later. Um, I think apart from the obvious maybe in, talent that Michael has, also, there was an incredible stroke of luck of being there at the right time and the right place where your tutor actually took you in. Yeah. That could have been a really terrible time in your life mm. where you could have given up everything. Would you agree with that, Michael? Yes, yeah, so I was on the verge. I could have gone one way or the other at the time, yeah. But I think in the end, I would have gone in a certain direction, um, but slower. Well, let's find out if you can actually predict success because in the audience we have Norman Page.